Hello and welcome to another episode of The Unicorner. It's been a week, but in return, I'm back with these two beautiful gentlemen, Klaus and Shannon. And uh, maybe you could introduce yourself, Klaus. Yes, um, I'm a core team lead. Um, I've been a developer here for three years. Uh, so I'm still doing development and also doing like team management stuff now, uh, which is good. So. Uh, yeah, I'm Shannon. I'm a core developer. I've been on the team for seven years in a bit, which is, that's how old I am. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But luckily we're not uh, here to talk about the past. We're more here to talk about the future. About eight. And we'll get back to that, but before we do that, we have a tradition. Who wants to start? Friendly and hungry. Do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So, friendly uh, tip. Yes. Uh, so, what's super friendly recently is we moved uh, our issue tracker to GitHub, which everyone is uh, aware of now. Uh, but we can make it even friendly. So, we're going to be working towards this goal. So, currently, uh, before you had to create an issue, and then before you had to go to the issue tracker and then go back to GitHub and create a PR and link the two. Now it's easier. You have an issue on GitHub and then you link the PR. But what if I'm already making the PR and there's no issue made? Well, the PR can be the issue. Mm -hmm. So then it's just one thing. Submit the PR with the issue details and it just goes into the release notes. Where are the excuses for uh, not contributing anymore? Yeah. So easy. Next it'll just write your code. <laughs> and we'll be back with another episode. <laughs> and the hungry one. If you were me, Shannon, what would you do? A lot of things. <laughs> but you can only pick one, and then um, you'll have to come back. I would choose to create something called schema types. Because then there's a cascading effect of what that is. A schema type is a downsized version of a document type, so you can just store properties. Schema types could then be used for nested content. They could then be used for the up and coming sometime super grid, grid 2.0. Uh, they could be used for macro parameter editors. So you just have a list. Um, potentially down the road, they could be used to store, instead of a grid cell having JSON, it could store a content reference somewhere hidden. So schema types. For the I love the idea. We've been talking about this for, for ages, yeah. but, uh, or not ages, a couple of years, I guess, Yeah. Uh, with different names, but um, maybe 2019. Yeah. But first, there's one thing uh, we need to finish before we can even uh, go to schema types, and that's V8. We've uh, already started to talk about uh, V8 uh, over the last couple of months, but it's mostly, mostly been about editor features. And then I stumbled across a post on our, which was actually in relation to better package management. And it's from um, a longtime community member called uh, Lars Erik Obeck. And, and uh, he writes, um, I don't know if that's interesting to HQ at all anymore. After all, they have won the devs already, so no need to make them happier. I thought that was interesting. Uh, I didn't know we would uh, we was winning anything, uh, but I, of course I also think it's mostly a joke. Um, but there's actually a lot in V8 when it comes to developers. Yeah, uh, we've been doing a whole lot of cleanup uh, for once, uh, which makes it the whole base whole code base a lot more cleaner and leaner to work with, which is really really a nice feature for developers. Um, we also added in some dependency injection which is something that people has been really wanting for a long time. Specifically Lars. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's not just some dependency injection, it's kind of dependency injection everywhere. Mm -hmm. What else do we got? Um, we have content apps. Yes. The new great thing. Uh, so we've just uh, kind of finalized that feature. Um, and if you're a developer uh, that just likes to write JavaScript or HTML, it's like, you know, this much code. Then you have a whole continent. It's very easy. It's actually so little that it was impossible to see at the camera because a unicorn couldn't even cover <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we got? No, but it's true. And by the way, uh, content apps, it's it's not only JavaScript code. You can also, of yeah. course, write yep. services, backend services if you like to. And you can even define them in C Sharp if you chose to. Yeah, no problem. 
Um, with dependency injection, uh, that just means things are easily unit testable. That's just kind of free out of the box with dependency injection, so that's nice. So less weird mocking? Exactly. Yeah, there'll be still some weird mocking, but... Uh, Not level Umbrago 7 yeah, mocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Then we have the whole back office experience. Basically, I mean, it's not only for developers, but the whole thing has been updated, uh, which includes the infinite editing. Mm -hmm. um, developers need to know about that, and they're probably going to benefit from that experience too. Um, so that's that's a really nice addition. And just recently, we've uh, reorganized the back office a little bit. Um, so when you log in, it's going to look a bit new and shiny. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is there's no developer section. Ooh, breaking news. <laughs> I don't have a breaking news button, uh, but we should have a breaking news button um, in post-production. We do have a new packager section though, which is uh, in there and then most things have moved to settings and some of those annoyances that we had where you know, people that have access to edit members could also edit the member types, so you can no longer do that. Sweet. Um, Another big thing that we are working towards in V8 and, and have improved a lot in V8 is that we're basically trying to make it more simple to do things. Uh, like we have one approach to doing things. Um, we're really working towards that. Uh, so instead of having different ways of doing it and then you have to figure out which one seems the better one, we are actually pushing you towards doing the right thing. So an example of that is like model dot get property value. Uh, HTML.field, uh, I don't know, there's probably 10 different ways to do that. Yeah, plus model to build them. And then dynamics. And, <laughs> and dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a good one. Uh, examine 1.0 is going to be featured in there as well. So turns out there wasn't a 1.0. Wow. Yeah. It was always point something. So <laughs> it's going to make its debut as 1.0. So there's going to be an 8.0 with a 1.0. Yeah, 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 that's cool. Uh, there's not, I mean, there's a lot of underlying plumbing changes, but to use it is just much nicer. There's nicer APIs. You can create indexes code first if you want, or config, up to you. It's just nicer. And it runs the newer Lucene. Cool. Nice. And speaking of dependencies in, in general, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of dependencies in Umbraco, and for eight, we could finally update. Uh, and remove some and, of them. Yeah. Yes, uh, V8 is a new major, so we have basically been able to remove a lot of the dependencies that we didn't really need, but would be considered breaking changes beforehand. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of cleanup in that regard too. Yeah, and this also means we can move past some of the versions that we're stuck on. Um, I know a big one is like Auto Mapper. Um, in newer versions, it's you know, way way faster. Well, now we get to use it. But we're the only ones using the slow version of, actually, the slowest version of Automapper. <laughs> so, unfortunately, that's going to stop now. Yep. Oh. It's just going to have to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to live with that. Yeah. I actually find it very cool that despite so many uh, changes uh, to, uh, to Umbraco, you can still, or maybe for the first time, really, clone the Umbraco 8 branch and just hit a 5. Yes. Yep and it actually just works. And it's not a four-digit warnings in uh, the output window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's actually quite, quite yeah. small. So in terms of uh, uh, weight, is it is it lighter or is it, uh, how much code has been added or is there less code in 8? There is substantially less code in 8. Um, a great example is Elitza, who's working as an intern for us. Um, she was given a cleanup task yesterday, which was a very, a very small cleanup task, but that small cleanup task allowed us to reduce 6,000 lines of code. What? Yeah, that's crazy, right? And it was actually quite a small task. Now we've done much larger tasks, so you can imagine how much code's actually been, been removed. It's quite nice. So it's a new major. There's lots of new features added. Of course, it's much slower than 7. <laughs> <laughs> or? No. No! No, no. no. <laughs> so far, uh, the results we've, we've been seeing from uh, some initial benchmarks, it, it seems like it's in most cases for the read performance uh, 
three to four times faster than the old one. So that's, that's a lot. That's like yeah. 300 to 400 percent. Exactly. <laughs> or greater than any other CMS I've ever seen. It's pretty it, good results. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the final results yet, but uh, it's uh, some initial testing we've done. That's crazy. Um, and I guess we're going to be doing more of yes. this, these sort of performance tests, I guess. Yep. Ongoing, probably for the next few Yeah, we, we want to make sure that everything we do is not uh, detrimental to the performance. It's actually just increasing performance. Um, so yeah, we'll be doing that. Cool. Before we move on, mm. uh, we have another tradition at the Unicorner, and I'm just going to uh, roll a video. It's, of course, our messy basement, full of weird things. And apparently, you went down there and found yes. something. Could you grab me that uh, little model train? Where is it? Oh! Yes. I'm kind of curious about why we have a model train in the basement. It's actually a mistake. I actually believe <laughs> uh, we should get this ship to Berlin. Okay. Because that actually belongs to Pierre. Oh. Ooh, I think it's from his office. So it is an Umbraco item. Yeah, but I don't think it's fair. I think it's from his childhood. Oh. He used to put it as he, at his uh, desk. Right. <laughs> so we better get it shipped. <laughs> sorry, Pia. <laughs> oh, we shouldn't say sorry, because it's your own fault that you didn't uh, pick it up. But uh, nice. that, that's the reason. There you go. I was first like, model train? What are you talking about? We don't have a model train. But yeah. Maybe we should uh, find out how much it's worth before we send it. <laughs> Maybe Antique Roadshow. Yeah, maybe maybe we could finance eight one. <laughs> no, we better ship it to Berlin. Yeah. Cool. Um, if I'm a, if I'm a developer and curious about getting started with eight, despite of course it's not released yet, what uh, what what could I do? It's it's uh, what is called October Hackathon. Hackathon. October. Hacktober, That's right. Uh, and maybe I want to uh, play with it and maybe even see if I can contribute. What would you suggest? Uh, well, I think the first thing is to go clone it from GitHub and, and start it up. Make sure it works. You can uh, any testing is much appreciated, right? Um, now that the repo is open for issues, um, you can do any testing you want. Uh, we've also started to post up uh, up for grabs issues. Um, or if you're going to some of the hackathons, I think we've sort of got a regulated list of we do we have a list from. of issues that we want people from the hackathons to to work on and oh, cool. i think we also have one that is called good first issue which is the github uh, standard for finding issues right uh, i think we flagged up some things with that uh, so i would say go search our repository and issues uh, for these yeah. tags uh, and you know as far as code cleanup goes uh, that's one of my personal favorite things to do uh, but there's still more code to clean up in that um, and we'd appreciate any effort to to help with that. So if you look for fix me's in the code base or to do's mm -hmm. or anything that says legacy, uh, yeah, feel free to jump in there and see what you can do. Another cool thing that you could do is to go through our language files. Uh, we always want new translations or updated translations for languages that we don't support. Um, unfortunately, I only speak Dan uh, Danish and English. <laughs> <laughs> Danish? Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, so basically, whatever is in Polish or Russian or whatever, uh, we would like people to contribute with translations for those. Um, we definitely need more people to do it for V8 since we are yeah. doing a lot of the UI. Um, so that will be a good place to, to start submitting some pull requests. Yeah, maybe even challenging uh, the places yep. where uh, the, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's funny, I don't know, maybe a tragedy about Umbrago right now is in the early days, there wasn't time to write nice uh, UI messages. Uh, so I just uh, took the name of whatever action and then OK. So for instance, once you were done sorting, it would just say sorting OK, which is OK in English. It's not really nice, but it's OK. But in some of the languages, it's just really weird. Yeah. Uh, so maybe even challenge uh, those. Uh, we could simplify all of our error messages to say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, our intern Elitza has also been working on cleaning up those files. So basically they've been changed a lot recently, uh, updated to not have duplicate keys, uh, but they could really use some, some 
manual work too, uh, instead of just automated tasks like, like we've been doing. Cool. Well, exciting times. Mm -hmm. Before we end, Klaus, yes. you're friendly and hungry. Yes. Um, one friendly tip. Um, a lot of people are using Reshava, developers using Reshava. Um, yes. I think, personally, it's been getting a lot slower uh, over the last year or so, uh, and it's really come to a point where I had to buy a new computer to actually use it. Um, what a shame. Yes, what a shame. <laughs> uh, apparently, a lot of the features of Reshava are actually added as Visual Studio features, uh, so I would encourage people to actually try going without Reshava for a while and see if it worked for them. Um, I'm missing a few features, uh, which is still keeping me on Reshava, but I was kind of surprised to hear that a lot of the feature apps are actually implemented in Visual Studio now. So if they actually implement the missing features, I could get your computer because it's pretty damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'll find an excuse. <laughs> and the hungry part, I'd really like to see that we, at some point, within the near future, move uh, Ubraco to running on uh, .NET Core. Um, I think that's something that the developers would really like to see, uh, just us keeping up on technology and industry standards. Um, yeah, we're a little bit behind on that part. Uh, I think it's something we need to prioritize at some point. How long will it take? <sighs> that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've done some work on getting it moved to to .NET Core, and I'm not really sure how much work is left. Uh, just print or two. Probably a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, and no matter what, uh, 2019 is going to be super exciting. It is. Uh, also for devs, because we don't win anyone. We uh, work damn hard, and then we hopefully, hopefully, people can tell that. Uh, and I think once we ship V8, people can will definitely be surprised about the amount of quality work that went into that release. Yeah. So, thank you so much, guys, for uh, being on. And this has been another episode of uh, The Unicorner. Thank you to Klaus and to Shannon. Uh, be sure to reach out on Twitter or in the comments and subscribe and like and all those things. And uh, I guess uh, we'll be seeing you at uh, festivals and at, uh, at Code Gardens and else Indeed. on the issue track. You bet. Yep. Bye. <laughs>